Hello and welcome back to TMA from Engadget. My name is Matt Smith and this week we're talking about everything announced at Google I.O. We're also talking about tech's new hottest power couple and sticks of a sort. Let's get into it. So yeah, in case you missed it, Google I.O. happened earlier this week with a major push by the company into new AI features, upgrades, experiments, and pricey, pricey subscriptions. One of the new features is an AI mode chatbot built into search. Now this is designed to handle more complex queries than your traditional nine to five search. So it might, for example, be able to compare multiple cars you're thinking of buying, or even pass different travel options for your next vacation. AI mode will also be able to fuse together how you might look in a new piece of clothing, although you will have to upload a photo of yourself first to do so. Google can then even track pricing in your size and preferred color of said clothing item. AI overviews powered by Gemini are part of this as well, and you've probably seen them summarizing your search requests without you ever having to leave Google search, which is great for Google, but not for the places where Google is getting those answers. In fact, the News Media Alliance soon labeled the new AI mode as theft. President and CEO Daniel Coffey said, Google just takes content by force and uses it with no return. The definition of theft. Now it wants the Department of Justice to address Google's newest search feature. I hinted at it earlier, but if you've got too much money and you want access to the most impressive AI features that Google revealed this week, there's a subscription for that. Yes, you'll need either AI Pro, $20 a month, or the insane $250 subscription, currently titled AI Ultra, for some of the most intriguing, but also creativity threatening features unveiled this week. Don't worry, AI Ultra does come with an introductory offer of just a mere $125 for the first three months. What a deal. If you did manage to find $1,000 in your annual budget, somewhere between the, the cushions of your sofa, you'll get to play around with Google's latest AI video creation tools, like VO3, which is the first iteration of Google's AI video generator that can now make videos with sound. And then, and more intriguingly, is a new filmmaking app called Flow, which builds on the experimental video FX feature we've seen in previous years. With it, you can edit and extend existing shots, add and edit camera movements and perspective controls, and even fold AI video content generated into subsequent projects. Don't worry though, filmmakers, it still looks plenty weird and creepy. I'm still working up on the courage to subscribe and then charge it as an expense to Engadget. Adding to this whole ultra AI package, you'll also be able to use deep research features for digging through the internet, but is that worth $250? Google is partly justifying the high cost by throwing in YouTube Premium and 30 terabytes of cloud storage, but YouTube Premium alone is only $14 a month. What about the other 200? And this week's technology wildcard story, OpenAI is buying IO, that's the design startup founded by Johnny Ive, yes, the iPhone guy. And to celebrate, the two founders took a black and white photo on an iPhone. Ivan is design studio Loveform will continue to work independently of OpenIO. However, the other co-founders will become OpenAI employees alongside about 50 other engineers, designers, and researchers. Does this mean physical OpenAI devices are on the horizon? Because AI-centric devices have thrived so far. Well, the description for the YouTube video you see here says it's building a family of AI products for everyone, whether we want them or not. Although apparently, reportedly, it won't be a phone or a wearable, which is at least a little bit intriguing. Now here's what else happened in the world of tech this week. First up, the Dyson Pencil Vac, which is the most stick-like stick vacuum ever, and that's all I'm gonna say, although it could cosplay as a giant ladle as well, as seen here. Fujifilm announced its latest camera, the X Half, which is a tiny $850 digital camera, and it even adds an optional retro date stamp to your pictures. And finally, Netflix has figured out a way to make ads even worse. Surprise, it's using AI. And that was your morning after. Thanks once again for watching along. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you wanna delve deeper into all of those stories I've mentioned this week, make sure to check out everything in full over at Engadget.com.